and say, not my will, let your will be done in my life. Lead our lives until now be the glory forever. You are worthy, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to our reaction and young adult night. This is one of my favorite nights. Our students are extremely talented. Our young adults are very talented. It's so cool to see all of them do everything that God has gifted them. They're doing it for the Lord, and I love that. Um, so we do have one announcement. If you are going to church camp this week, the van is leaving uh, next week, Monday. The van is leaving Monday at 1 p.m. and bring lunch money because you'll stop and get something on the way. So tonight we have a special service for all of our graduates. We're going to honor them. We're gonna hear a really great message from Mark to speak to our students. But one thing that I was thinking about with the graduates, they're going to a new season. And in Isaiah 43, it says, I am now doing a new thing, even now, do you not see it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And our graduates are going to definitely a new season. Some are used to having a whole summer off and they're gonna learn what it's like to work every single day. And others are going to college or more school or right to the workforce, whatever they're doing. But we are in a new season too. In each of our lives, we all go through seasons. Maybe it's been your rainy season, your dark and cold season, and you're like, God, when am I gonna see that first spring flower come up? When is that gonna happen for me? Maybe you're the other person where it's been your yes season. It's been spring forever and you're loving it. No matter what your season is in, no matter what season you're in, God is faithful. He is faithful through it all. And I hope that we can just pray just for a couple of minutes that God would direct our steps through every season that we would give him glory, 
Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for our graduates. Thank you for every season that you put us through. We learn through every season. We grow in every season. We thank you for being the sovereign God. You are worthy. I thank you, Jesus. Continue to lead us. Bless our service tonight in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Wrap us in your arms, God. That is what we want tonight. Wrap us in your arms, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I really, really love our students here. Every reaction service, it's just such a privilege to sit here and watch them do what they do. There's a lot of talent here, a lot of godly talent in this church coming up. And loving our students, this is one of my favorite services of the year, our, our reaction service, our graduate graduation services. And that's what's happening tonight. We're going to honor our grads here tonight. And for several different reasons, we're a little short. There's a few of them that are out of town and some sick and, well, let's just face it, there was tornadoes in the area again tonight and, and I'm, a lot of folks stayed home because of that. So I, I pray that everybody was safe and will be, continue to be safe tonight. And uh, wow, I just, we've had enough of that. So we don't need any more of that, but so tonight we're going to honor our high school graduates, um, and as we call their na your names, we have three of them and four, wherever Daniel is, if you want to make your way to the front, Daniel, we'll call you up, you guys come up these set of stairs here, and we'll present you with the Bible, and then you can stay in the middle for pictures, and then um, we're going to hear from our hyphen pastor, Mark Kugler, he's going to speak to us tonight. Before we get to the high school graduates, though, I'd like to mention we had two, four, five college graduates this year that received um, degrees from various universities. Those were Alex Brown, Jonathan Coleman, Preston Coleman, Garrett Albrick, and Lexi Alcorn. So let's give them a hand. Oh, yeah. You guys can be seated. I'm sorry. And then one oddball that graduated from Fire Academy, where's Mark Webb at? Mark Webb, are you in the building? Well, he was. So let's give Mark Webb a hand for graduating his Fire Academy. He's a, he's a firefighter now. Okay, so we're going to dive into our high school grads. The first one tonight is not with us due to sickness, but we are going to recognize them anyway. Our first one is Braden Hall. <laughs> Braden graduated from Miami Valley Career Technology Center and Wayne High School. He earned a Natural Resource Management Certificate of Recognition with honors. By completing the natural resource management program, he was able to learn competencies in environmental science for agriculture and natural resources, forestry and woodland ecosystems, natural resources and wildlife fisheries. He was an active participant with the Future Farmers of America in local, sub-district, state and national levels. Braden's future plans include attending a conservative Christian college or university and earning a master's of ministry with plans for continued ministry education. Let's give Braden another hand. Our next graduate is Cameron Oba. Come on up. So, Cam. Graduated from Miami Valley Career Technology Center, he earned his certificate in natural resource management. In the past two years, he's earned college credits in environmental science, wildlife and fisheries, field zoology, field botany, and more. He also earned his 10-hour OSHA certificate, graduated with a 3.4 GPA, and was awarded the Sinclair Tech Prep Scholarship of $3,000. Cameron has held down two jobs, played recreational basketball through Huber's youth program. He's worked for Kroger since 2018, interned through school at the Dayton Country Club since 20, January 22. He transferred to a local Kroger in Springfield and now is employed by the Springfield Country Club. 
His future plans are to attend the welding program through Sinclair and hopes to transfer to the Hobart Institute to further that trade. And when asked about other comments, he said, I have to thank my parents. They have prayed, loved, supported, influenced, guided, and helped me over the years. I'm truly blessed. I'm definitely looking forward to the future and seeing what the Lord has planned. Let's give him a hand. Our next graduate is also not present because they're on vacation having lots of fun. Carson Holden graduated from Piqua Christian School. He played high school basketball. He was active in the P7 Club, which is a Bible study club for high school students. He, his future plans include attending Wright State University to major in communications and organiz, organizational leadership. He would like to thank his mom and dad for all the sacrifices and the work with helping him this school year. And he would also like to thank Pastor Friend, myself, and Mark for believing in his ministry and helping him to become more involved in ministry. Also, he'd like to give a huge thanks to the rest of his family and friends for supporting him and being there for him. So let's give Carson a hand. I gave Jared the ones who aren't here and I do the ones who are here. <laughs> Our next grad is Savannah Couch, otherwise known as Ray of Sunshine. Graduated from Northridge High School, honors diploma, top 10 in her class, earned the Citizenship Builder Award. She was an Honor Society member and served as ambassador. And in the future, she's gonna to go to college for two years to become an occupational therapy assistant. And her ministry goal is to do God's work by healing people and helping them live better lives through occupational therapy. Let's give her another hand. All right, Stefan Moss, come on up, buddy. <laughs> Stefan graduated from Wayne High School and Miami Valley Career Technology Center, he where he completed the welding program. He, he was awarded the top welder in his class. Wow. We've got a lot of welders here. His future plans are, are to operate a lawn care business. And his other comments, he'd like to, he was presented with, the, he presented his principal with a welded bow tie and his picture was in the Dayton Daily News because of it. I think we have a picture of that, maybe? No? Oh, there it is. That's pretty sweet. All right, let's give Stefan a hand. And finally, we come to Daniel Dobbs. All right. Graduated from Liber Liberty Christian Academy. Uh, he's graduating one year earlier than anticipated. He enjoys playing piano in his spare time and enjoys playing keyboards here at New Life. He is currently employed at Dick's Sporting Goods and has interest in continuing his studies in music and he would like to continue his growth in music ministry. He is goal-driven to become a young entrepreneur in hopes to one day build up to be a business owner. One more time, let's give Daniel a hand. I wonder if we could all stand and let's give them all a hand. Thank you all. You can be seated tonight. I just want to say, it's already been said, but thank you all for coming out tonight and supporting our young people. Uh, again, some sickness out there, some vacations, you know, tornadoes, things like that. But we really appreciate, and I think our young people appreciate, your presence here 
and supporting them. And, and even if you're not directly related to these particular graduates, I want to say that your prayers and your encouragement and your example to them, to them still means a lot. So thank you very much for being here and supporting your church's young people. It takes a community of believers to raise these young people into mature Christians. And again, we appreciate you being here. Growing up uh, is not easy. And the graduates we have with us tonight, as well as our entire fusion student body and all of our hyphen young adults are arguably in the most transformative years of their lives. They are transitioning from teenagers to adults. Uh, they are uh, experiencing these other life challenges and new responsibilities that that brings with it. It was the millennial generation that coined the term adulting. And we've had the word adult for a long time, but the term adulting came about in recent years. And it simply means to behave like an adult especially when you don't want to, and completing the mundane and ordinary responsibilities of adults. It is to become an adult. It is a transformation into this almost strange creature which suddenly has the need to count calories ingested. And up to that point, you never cared about calories, but when you're adulting, now you care about calories. I feel like no one knows what I'm talking about. Am I the only one, <laughs> thank you, that went through this, I ate everything in sight. I'm gonna tell on us, this is probably wrong, young people don't repeat my example, but Justin and I would go to the all-you-can-eat buffets and we would eat there for breakfast and we would stay for lunch and we would try to get at least two meals off the same ticket at a buffet and so, that was back when I didn't care about the calorie count. And now I have to pay attention to such matters. When you're younger and you have an injury, it's usually incurred by something kind of interesting or dramatic. You, you twist your ankle on a layup. You do a backflip on a trampoline and fall off. You, you pull a muscle because you're rock climbing. Or if you're me, you flip a go-kart at youth camp, something like that. But when you're adulting, you are injured because you slept wrong. I mean, how do you do that? You just, you slept wrong. I didn't know you could sleep wrong. You just sleep. But no, when you're adult, you sleep wrong. And then when you're adulting, you get injured because you, have you heard this phrase? I sat too long. <laughs> Has who said it? Just raise your hand now so we can shame you publicly. Very good. So I sat too long, that produced an injury, a physical ailment. Or you had the audacity to cough and God help you. You coughed and everything is now out of alignment. And now you've got to schedule an appointment with your chiropractor. That is what coughing will do to you. Um, you, you tie your shoe and again, Young people, they just tie their shoes, but adults, they are worried about tying their shoes. I will personally admit on more than one occasion, I have pulled a muscle while putting a sock on my foot. And again, I didn't know that you could do that wrong. I just thought you just put your socks on. And now it's happened twice now. And now I'm actually a little afraid to put my socks on in the morning. And so I'm really, really careful. I have a specific chair I sit in and I actually, I just have to have this routine that I really make sure, you know, I'm all stretched out before I put my socks on. This is what adulting is. Are you excited for it? Can't wait, but don't worry. So big, important, cool things are about to happen. Big things are about to happen for you young people. So, and I'm talking to all of you, not just the grads, but all of you young people that are basically younger than me, then big things are about to happen. You are about to make some of your own very important decisions all by yourself without anybody telling you what to do. You can be on, you're basically on the verge of being able to um, make big decisions like you can go to bed whenever you want. And that time is 9.30 p.m. That's, that's what time you can go to bed now when you want to. Uh, you will get to look forward to things like collecting used plastic grocery bags. That's, that's a favorite pastime of a lot of adults. 
look in their closets, they have just, just tons of, of used Walmart bags. And um, you're never going to use them all. You can recycle some of those. Um, as an adult, you, you do still want to be invited to parties, but you just simply don't want to go to them, right? You like, include me in the invite, but I send my regrets. You know, that, that's your new... You will discover that you actually now have a, a favorite spatula. And I don't even cook, but when occasionally if I make a pancake, there's a particular spatula that I like to use, and it's better than the other spatulas in the drawer. And I never noticed that until I started adulting. So you get that, that to look forward to. Um, just a couple more here, a couple more, just put up with me. You'll, you'll get a little excited, this is true, when it's time to replace your magic eraser with a new one. You know what I'm talking about? Like that old one is kind of falling apart, but you're like, oh, this new one, right? This one is gonna be the savior of my shoes. You, um, you used to care about really important concerns, but now you get annoyed by like when they rearrange the grocery store. I heard a lot about that. A um, lot of complaints from adults when McDonald's switched from styrofoam to plastic cups. You remember that? And all the adults really, I didn't hear any teenagers talking about that, but man, the adults, they, they were up in arms. And, and then you really know it, the, the conversion, the, the transmutation has occurred when you find yourself asking uh, for the manager to address some of these situations. Like that is a major milestone when you've adulted enough to ask for the manager. Um, I, I find myself going into restaurants and asking, you know, if it's like eating a meal after say three o'clock, I need a sugar-free, caffeine-free beverage option. And the uh, waiter offered me water. Um, <laughs> he's not wrong, but that wasn't what I was shooting for. And the lastly, I, I've got a picture, and if you're a grad and you went through English class and you took some poetry, you may know what a haiku is. It's a very specifically structured poem, and if they could put that on the screen, this is a haiku about being an adult. It's, I am so tired, where did all my money go? My back is hurting, and there you go. That is an adulting haiku. So if you're into that kind of thing. So we're joking, we're, we're joking. Mostly. Um, I mean, that's all true, but we're making fun of it. Being an adult is, there's good stuff, right? It's not just all that. It's, um, it's independence, and it's fun, uh, and there's new experiences, and there's freedom. Uh, this life is important. Somebody say, this life. So making good decisions in the near future right now for this life is important. But there is so much more after, after this life. There's so much more after this life. My goal tonight is to help you prioritize Eternity. What you do in this life affects eternity. I want you to look at this rope, and right here on the tip here, just these four to six inches, this is your existence here in this life on earth. And I want you to imagine that this rope goes on forever. And the rest of this is eternity. And the decisions I make on this part, they have an impact on the rest of eternity. Somehow, we have begun to focus so much on this part. And we have forgotten sometimes to focus on the rest of eternity. You've got a few short years here on earth, and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. And what's amazing is that most of humanity is only thinking about this part. We are consumed with this part. We live to please ourselves either right now or to provide for ourselves in this part in the future. 
Our big goals in life are get my driver's license or have an athletic victory of some sort or get married or graduate or have kids or have career success. And if we do all those things right in this part, then maybe we can enjoy just that last little piece called retirement in this little last part here. And all of those big goals that we talk about can fit right here into this part, just a few inches long. But let me help you see how much more is coming. There is so much more to your existence than just that little part there. This, this stretches not just to the end of this rope here, but I want you to imagine that this rope stretches into eternity forever and ever and ever. And I'm gonna ask you tonight to start shifting your focus away from just this part. And I know this is unusual for a graduation theme message when we're so focused on the big thing, the big goal, the big achievement you just did. And that's awesome and powerful and wonderful and we're happy for you. But my purpose tonight is to help you to focus beyond just this part and start thinking about all the rest of your existence that's coming. Over the past 20 or maybe 30 years, Christians as consumers have demanded that churches address issues that are more directly relevant to this earthly life. So, so churches everywhere pivoted from a focus on eternity and they began to offer classes on things like computer skills and resume writing and marriage enrichment seminars and financial literacy and credit building. And I have helped with these programs. I've taught some of these programs. I love those programs. We should do as much of that as we can. I think they're needed and helpful. But in the middle of all of that, I also need the church to remind me, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. I need the church to remind me, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy, we welcome his returning. I need a church that will remind me there is going to be a meeting in the air in that sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, I'm going to see you. See you over there in that home beyond the sky. I need a church to remind me that one of these old mornings, it won't be very long. You're going to look for me, but I'll be gone. I need the church to remind me to prioritize eternity, to help me see the rest, to help me see the rest of this rope. You can be seated tonight. The goal of the church, mm. and I think this is clarifying tonight because the church gets a lot of criticism nowadays for not doing enough of these earthly focuses. But let me help clarify something. The goal of the church is not to help you graduate with academic honors. The goal of the church is not to ensure your financial success. The goal of the church is not to develop your professional career. The goal of the church is not even, I know this is gonna blow your minds, the goal of the church is not even to ensure you have a fun and healthy social circle of friends. That actually is not the purpose of the church. And holistic ministry should seek to address all those needs, but it's not our primary mission. The ultimate goal of the church is to help you make heaven your eternal home. So if you never get a diploma, if you never marry your soulmate, if you are a financial failure, let me tell you, if you make heaven, if you make heaven, heaven will make it all all right. If you mess up down here on earth, but you made eternity count. If you mess up this short little part down here, but the rest of this rope, it's gonna make it all all right. In a world that's consumed with getting everything that we want, where is the generation that will declare, if I never get everything I want in this life, I'll be satisfied if I make heaven my home. I wanna help you prioritize eternity. See it as a priority. And we're thrilled you earned your diploma. We are, that's why we did all this tonight. We're so proud of you. Your academic achievements, your athletic achievements. Beyond that, we can't wait to see what else you're going to do and become in this life. 
But if our student ministry and young adult ministry succeeds in only helping you academically and socially, financially, we have missed the mark. But if we help you get to heaven, that's the rest of the rope. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse 18, Paul says, we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Over the next few years, you are about to be bombarded with the things which are seen, college courses, financial decisions, more serious relationships, new worldviews, the idea of moving out on your own, buying a car, paying bills, getting a job, keeping a job, worrying about your credit score, getting insurance, and you are going to be juggling a lot of new priorities. Brother Billy and Jared, if you'd help me out. You're gonna be juggling these priorities, juggling new responsibilities, along with a bunch of other things that we'll just call distractions. And I, I'm, I'm gonna need a volunteer, someone who is moderately athletic and, come on, Andrew, can you help us out? Thank you. Moderately athletic, not, not too athletic, yes. So for years now, I've tried to help people evaluate their lives by using, if they'll put up this slide, the, the five F's, I call it. This is faith, your family or your friends and relationships. So just one second there. Your, your fitness, which is kind of your physical health or maybe even your mental health, you can include in that. Your finances, let's talk about your money situation. And let's look at your field, your school, your career. And, and that's just been a consistent theme in a lot of conversations I have with young people is let's evaluate these five areas and let's just see how we're doing in life. And Andrew here is sort of kind of adulting. Is that all right? And he's going to start juggling some priorities. You guys have a mic? Go ahead. Uh, Andrew, it's finals week this week. Don't let that fall, Andrew. Don't let that fall. Just make sure you just keep it up in the air. Finals week, but your schedule got changed at work, too. Yeah, don't let those fall. And on top of going to school and work, uh, you have no clean laundry. Laundry is all dirty. Turn them inside out, wear them again. Your laundry, your overdraft fees now. Uh, keep going, keep going. Also, your mom has a health problem, so oh. there's some stress for you. I'm sorry, Rachel. But while you're stressing, don't forget to read the Bible and pray. Yeah, got to put that first. Even though you have a headache, your headache come from your interview you had on Monday. <laughs> or maybe because your significant other wants to be friends. Aw. Aw. And that happened because you forgot to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> we all get, let's give Andrew a hand. He did a pretty good job. That was impressive. He did a pretty good job. And you're like, Brother Mark, that was impossible. Exactly. It is rarely, if ever, possible to keep all those balloons in the air. There will almost never be a time that every priority in your life is perfect. So how do you balance all of those concerns? You don't. You prioritize them. Balance implies that you give equal weight and equal attention and equal time and equal effort to everything. We're not balancing these things. We are prioritizing them and weighting them differently depending on their importance. The key to life is not to balance every aspect of life, it is to prioritize the aspects of life. And if up to this point in your life, Jesus has come lower on your list than other things, tonight is the time to move him up to where he is supposed to be. If you let these other things fall, there's consequences, but they are not eternal. But if you let Jesus fall, that has an eternal impact. 
We need to make sure that the one thing we keep at the top is our relationship with the Lord. Now is the time to move him to the top. College is important. Your career is important. Marrying the right person is important. But nothing is as important as staying close to Jesus Christ. If everything else falls, hold on to Jesus. When you can't keep them all in the air, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on eternity. Put your focus on the rest of that rope. Everything else, let it fall, but don't let your relationship with God fall. That's the one you've got to chase after. That's the one you've got to pursue at all costs. Everybody else can leave you. Every other relationship can fade away, but my relationship with Jesus must remain the ultimate priority of my life. Paul said in Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul maintained a singular focus amidst multiple priorities. The shame of his past must have haunted him. The physical demands of travel took its toll in his body. The emotional burden of caring for so many people weighed on his mind. The heartache at being slandered by others who claimed to be Christians. That he was shipwrecked, he was beaten with rods, he went hungry, he was imprisoned, he was Stoned with rocks. You can imagine Paul with these balloons just trying to keep it all together, trying to run this ministry, trying to fulfill this calling God put on his life. He's just trying to keep all these things in the air. But you can relate to Paul who had so many responsibilities, so many cares and concerns, but he said this, this one thing I do, not all these things I do, this one thing I do, in the middle of all these other needs, this one thing I do, surrounded by chaos of competing priorities, this one thing I do, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. With so many immediate matters that he demanded his attention, how could he prioritize so lofty a concern? He explains in 2 Corinthians 5.1, we know that our body, the tent we live in here on earth, will be destroyed. But when that happens, God will have a home for us to live in. It will not be the kind of home people build here. It will be a home in heaven that will continue forever. He says, this body is a tent, but heaven is permanent. This body is temporary, but heaven is eternal. All that stuff is important. All those other matters are going to need your attention. They are going to require some investment of your time, but eternity is coming. Eternity is calling. Paul's focus wasn't only on the here and now. His eyes were on the rest of that rope. This life, it, uh, it always seems too short. It just always seems too short. I know people who live into the over age 100 and the family wishes they had more time with them. This life always seems too short. If you could put that first picture up, the average human will only live to maybe 68 to 73. If you make it to 65, then it goes up to ages 83 to 84 on average. Now, if we think that's too short, I want you to look at this next picture. The shortest lifespan on earth is that guy, is a mayfly. It only lives for 24 hours. Its purpose is to find a mate. Can I get some young people to say, amen. He is so focused on that purpose, he does not even develop a mouth. There ain't no time to eat. Nobody got time for that. He is looking for a girlfriend. He lives 24 hours. Now let me tell you about another animal whose life is too short. Go ahead. This was my good boy, Samson. Yeah, exactly. He lived 12 years, I think, almost. And that wasn't long enough. He was our baby before we had babies. He literally smiled when he was with you. Look, at, look that's a real smile. He actually, you can see, he smiles. 
And the average dog lives about 13 years. And, and many of you know what I'm talking about because here's some of yours. Go ahead and play through those. Here's some of yours. They look familiar? Keep going. Here's a cute one. Yeah. Too short. Oh, my goodness. Is that Lucy? Yeah. Yeah. Too short. Too short. And <laughs> keep going. There he is. He's a good boy. Man. <laughs> That's, yeah, I was waiting on that one. There we go. There we go. And some people think they figured out why these little buddies' lives are too short. Put that next slide up. It's a meme. It says, God creates dogs, takes one look at them, says, wow, these are awesome. I'm going to want them back really soon. <laughs> Maybe that explains it. But then some people say they even have a similar feeling for cats. So we'll throw that one in <laughs> for you people. If you say so. So whichever kind of pet you have, one thing's for sure, from our vantage point, their lives are too short. And James, I'm going to read James chapter 4, verse 14. He says, you don't know what tomorrow will bring. He, you don't know what your life will be tomorrow. You are like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. And people want practicality, but the Thompson Chain Study Bible talks about the book of James, and it said its emphasis is on practical religion. James is easily one of the most practical writers of the scriptures. And yet he's talking about this sort of vaporous concept. Life just appears for a little while and then vanishes. People want sermons of practicality, like how can I use this now in this life? James notes, if this life is a mere fraction of the rest of your existence, then is it not practical to focus on eternity? So in tonight's message, I don't have to remind you about this life because the world is going to do that job for me. Your manager is going to remind you about your responsibilities in this life. Your professor will remind you about your concerns of this life. Your friends will remind you your romantic interests. She will remind you. He will remind you about your, your concerns for this life. They will all constantly remind you about the cares of this life. We are already too aware of our goals and our ambitions and our obligations and, and our responsibilities in order to be successful and comfortable and happy in this life. But this preacher's job tonight is to give you a word from heaven, and that word is don't forget the rest of the rope because eternity is coming and it's going to be here sooner than you think. I, I don't know how short or how long that first part is, but one thing I do know is that eventually this part will run out. This part will be over and done, and that other part will begin. So I better start living like the rest of the rope matters. I better start living like the rest of the rope is more important than this first part. I better start living as though I actually believe in eternity. And start praying like it matters. Would you stand with me tonight? Oh, I wonder if we could just give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Can we just worship him for a moment? Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Can you lift up your voice for just a moment? God, I love you. Thank you for your presence here already. Thank you, Jesus. The rest of the rope. That word rest jumped out at me. By definition, it is the part that is left, the part that remains. It's what's left over after everything else has faded away. After the house crumbles and the car that you worked hard to get rusts, after your money dissolves, even your youth and health dries up. And you know, that beautiful diploma that we're so proud of, that college degree, it will yellow with age as it sits in a box in the basement. All of these things will fade away. After this short part is over, there's just not a whole lot that's left. The, the rest is very limited. There's not many things that survive the erosion of time. It occurred to me that it's ironic that the things 
which are seen vanish, but the things which are not seen appear when you cross that threshold. So there's just a few things continue, just a few things abide throughout the rest of the rope. You, Jesus, heaven, those you bring with you and the impact you've left on those behind you. We're gonna close in prayer. We're gonna do a special prayer for our graduates. I'm gonna ask our grads, go ahead and come to the front. If you wouldn't mind, kind of come as close to this front area as you can. Thank you all for cleaning that up. So our high school graduates, please go ahead and come on up front and just spread out across this front right here. Please come with your family, your parents, any immediate loved ones or close friends, if you'd like to join them here at this altar. Our student pastor, he's passing out just a very simple symbol to remind you to keep your focus on the rest of this rope. Young people, I wanna let you know that our, like our leadership team, we, we anointed these with oil and we prayed for these over these ropes tonight and over your lives tonight. So I hope that that means something to you and that that anointing will go with you as you move forward in life. That being said, I would like our ministers to go ahead and if we could grab some vials of oil here. And, and I'm also going to ask for any of our college graduates from Hyphen. If you are a young adult between 18 and 30 and you've graduated college this year, or you earned a degree this year, I want you to go ahead and make your way forward. And just again, be as close to this front as possible so we know who to pray for. And as you come up, Again, I would ask your friends, go ahead, and if you're friends of these young people, go ahead and surround them as well. Ask our ministry and our reaction leaders to find someone to pray with. And all of our students and young adults now, let's go ahead and fill in behind them. The rest of the church, if you just wanna pray for these young people, I ask you to go ahead and please help us do that. We could use all the prayers we can get. These young people can use everything they can get. And right now, let's go ahead and let's anoint these young people with oil. Let's go ahead and lay a hand on them. Let's go ahead and encourage and support them. I wonder if we could lift up our voices to the Lord right now. Let's put a blessing on their lives. I believe in that. I believe that you can place a blessing on their lives. God, I pray right now that faith will be transferred in this house. God, I pray right now that every one of these young lives will be committed to you. Jesus, I pray that there would be a singular focus. Hallelujah, I pray that nothing else would be more important than heaven. God, I pray they would have no other gods but you. Graduates, I just want you to receive those prayers, receive that encouragement, receive that faith right now. Let it strengthen you, let it build you up, let it let it clarify your future, let it clarify your vision. Oh, go ahead and open your hearts right now. Saints of God, let's pour into them, let's pour some faith into them right now. Oh, pray for a covering over them. God, put a covering and a hedge around about them. Put your protection around them. Lord, send angels into their life to defend them. Let's go ahead and work our way around to each one of these graduates. Go ahead and work your way around to each one. I'm sorry. Oh, God's doing a work in you right now, Stefan. God's doing a work in you right now. Let him, let him move some things around. Let him change and rearrange some parts of our lives. Oh, God, give clarity about priorities. Help us to put in order our lives. Order our steps. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, be with them. Oh, put a passion in them for you. Put a passion in the hearts for your word. Let them be drawn to you, drawn to your presence. If nobody else goes, let them come to prayer. If nobody else seeks you, let them seek you. God, if they're the only one that 
worships, let them find a place of worship with you. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Oh, you ought to rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. I rebuke the enemy right now in Jesus' name. He would try to have you to sip you as wheat, but Peter said, I have prayed for you that your faith would fail not. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can we just pour a hand up in this direction, Bill? Come on, let's pour a hand to these young people. God, cover them right now. Cover them right now. Direct the steps, Lord. Jesus, Direct every step, oh God. Inspire them, Lord. Put a burden in their heart, God. Oh, hallelujah. You're not held back by your past anymore. That's washed away. You're a new creation. All things are made new. Tonight starts a new moment in your life. Tonight starts a new chapter in your life. I'm sorry. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just sing another song and take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry. Sure enough, take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else would do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, no, nothing else would do. I just want.